Hi friends, welcome back. So we're talking robots and um, if you haven't seen this yet, you gotta see it. This is uh, the all new Atlas from Boss Dynamics and it is crazy. Look at this thing get up. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? <laughs> and uh, this just kind of popped out of nowhere. I'm like, what the heck is this? Um, it is really, really impressive. And um, you actually gotta see it again because you're like, what the heck is this thing? Uh, this is from Boston Dynamics. Um, yeah, thing. Crazy. And um, the first thing that comes to mind when watching it get up again here is this thing is so far ahead of the Tesla bot. Um, that would be the, um, uh, what do they call that thing? The Optimus thing. I mean, and the, the other thing I want to point out too, this is uncut. Uh, Boston Dynamics does this quite a bit with their with their tech. They, they, you know, they don't cut it. They just do a single take. Make sure you can see, yep, this is what we got. We're awesome. <laughs> we know it. And we're showing you our tech. Um, the thing that pops out to me really is, is the kind of the flex, I don't know if flexibility is the right word, the, the way this thing can turn. It looks like all these joints, you know, here can turn in, in different ways. And, um, I mean, it, it is, it is that look at this Think how flexible and how well this thing can turn. Um, you know, obviously they're probably going to do more demos. We don't know, like if it can grab things and it can jump, this kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, we do know though in their prior one, and this was actually, um, just yesterday, they put out a video farewell to the HD Atlas. This is their older version of it. Um, so I guess essentially they're just going to a new platform. Um, this wing was always impressive to me as well. So, you know, the thing that they've actually moved beyond this thing. And um, if you guys have been watching this stuff, you know, throughout the, the years of development, can rock on rocks, this kind of stuff. And they practice pushing it down a hill, <laughs> having it jump. I mean, I mean, and they pick up stuff, you know, do acrobatics, but it just shows you like, how hard, I mean, it, it, you know, see so guys, it, it takes all this testing, right? And it would break quite a bit. Um, it's tough. And the issue is too, is like, I, I wonder why they completely abandoned this and went with a different design. Um, the other thing that, the, you know, the other thing that I want to mention is, is that, you know, we've only seen this first, and this is a simulation, but uh, we've only seen this first demo of this thing. Um, the new one seems a lot thinner. That really pops out to me. Um, it, it looks like a lot more something that I would actually, you know, me, I don't know about me personally, we'll just say a person would buy um, it, like a little bit more pleasing to the eyes. I thought the other one was um, not so pleasing, um, but yeah. Now, whether or not we want to <laughs> see a robot moving that way, it's a little bit creepy. And that's one thing that I want to point out with the human or robot stuff is that when you get too human looking, it's just a little bit creepy. Um, I, I feel you should go as friendly looking robot as possible. That's my opinion on that. Now, when you compare it to the Tesla one, it, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, one is Tesla cuts a lot in their videos, right? Cut, cut, cut. So, you know, who knows how much of this stuff is real and stuff like that. And, and there's always been debate about, you know, how far Tesla is along. Um, they tend to over exaggerate, um, you know, what their ability is. And again, there's lots of cuts in this stuff. I think there's an egg demonstration or they have a little bit of, yeah, it, it's not jumping around like that. Um, it does have fingers. Uh, you can see that. So they'll make the case that their fingers are awesome. And this is sort of what the, the egg thing is. But they do a lot of cuts with this. So I think they cut around here. You watch this cut. Yeah, see that. So, you know, how many takes did you take to do this and how many cuts you do to do your presentation? Um, again, though, when you do design these things, I think you want to make them friendly. <laughs> so uh, this one is, uh, I'd go with Boston Dynamics, but um, I'm sure Tesla fanboys and fangirls will, will still say that Optimus is better. And um, you have to mention this stuff because if, if you're, you know, a sincere person and you like robots, um, you know, don't gush over the Tesla uh, robot. Uh, without gushing over Boston Dynamics. And again, to me, just objectively speaking, I think the Boston Dynamics is, is well ahead. Now, there has been a rumor lately, we've been talking about this on the channel, that Apple may be developing some sort of home robot. Uh, they canceled their car. So are they going on robots? Is that where the new money and, and uh, uh, sort of competition is going to be? Uh, well, Amazon tried it, and um, this was the headline. Don't be fooled. Amazon's Astro isn't a home robot. It's a camera on wheels, and um, it's basically this thing. And I, I don't know how many people bought this thing. I, I think it I think it came in like $1,500 or something like that. It, it's just too expensive for regular people. And then, like, plus it's inconvenient. It's, I don't know. It's not that great. That's why it didn't really be a success. Um, this particular one here... This never really went commercial, but there was estimates. Where is it here? I'll give it. There was estimates that if you were to sell these to people, you kind of be in the hundred fifty thousand dollar range. Um, the Boston Dynamics always has like a dog thing, and that thing sells for around seventy five. So you know, just off the cuff, if I have to say how much these things are going to cost, we'll just say maybe maybe if you were to try to sell these commercially, these you know robots here, maybe they're going to be 
200 to 250 something like that in that range i i don't know you know what they're coming in at but i'm just saying that's sort of what it is because the issue is you know will these be widespread well it depends on the cost right um i want to go through um uh the blog post that boston dynamics put out i think it's interesting i will go through it together and see what they have to say so it says an electric new era for atlas our new electric atlas platform is here supported by decades of visionary ro uh, robotics innovation and years of practical experience boston dynamics is tackling the next commercial frontier so I mean, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, this week we announced the retirement, uh, sad, of our hydraulic atlas and unveiled what comes next, a fully electric. So we're moving away from hydraulics, going with fully electric atlas robot designed for real world applications, what they say. Uh, next generation of the atlas program builds on decades of research and furthers our commitment to delivering the most capable, useful mobile robot solving the toughest challenges in the industry today with spot with stretch and now with atlas uh, spot is their dog stretch is like their arm thing and then this is their their atlas thing there um, a decade ago we were one of the only companies putting real r d effort into humanoid robots now the landscape in the robots industry is very different our customers have seen success with spot and stretch and they are eager to tackle the next challenge with atlas so my understanding with the spot thing um i, I read an article recently and i showed you guys on the channel uh, it hasn't sold that many, uh, maybe like a thousand of things they've sold. And they again, they sell for about 75K. Um, this stuff's expensive. Um, you know, whether or not they can actually sell this, uh, you know, Atlas thing remains to be seen. Um, it says in Stretch, they're eager to tackle the next challenge with Atlas. Or given our track record of successful commercialization, we are confident in our plan to not just create an impressive R&D project, but to deliver a valuable solution. So it sounds like, and I'm just talking, it sounds like are we are we guys are we talking the language of IPO? <laughs> That's been um, something that uh, they're either this is Hyundai because uh, I think they own majority share. They either have to take this thing IPO or um, buy a soft a soft banks um, a whole a more, a share of this thing. So uh, you know we'll see if they if they bring an IPO or not. And let's talk about Boston Dynamics. If they do, this will be a highly highly anticipated IPO. So we'll keep it track of something interesting. Uh, this says here this journey will start with uh, Hyundai. Um, in addition to investing in us, the Hyundai team is building next generation of automotive and manufacturing capabilities, and it will serve as a perfect testing ground for new Atlas applications in months and years ahead. We're excited to show what the world's most dynamic humanoid robot can really do in the lab, in the factory, I'm getting aggressive here, and in our lives. So experimenting, uh, we're doing some work for you know production, I guess, for factory, and in our lives, home, maybe. Well, it didn't really say home, it just says in our lives. So we'll, you know, I'll leave it at that. Um, I personally wouldn't want to spend 200K to put this in my home. I think it would freak everyone out. But, <laughs> but it wasn't going to be different. Some people are like, you know what? I definitely want robots serving drinks, you know, to be a, like a party thing. Uh, and other people, uh, will just say this, are looking forward to intimate relationship with robots. But uh, <laughs> uh, we're still a long ways from the, from the uh, robot partners. But it's coming eventually, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I'm just being honest. You know, we, we all know about that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a thing. So right now it's a little bit too creepy, but maybe for some people that's attractive. Who knows? <laughs> you don't know the, the market for this stuff. Uh, the journey with Atlas. All right, um, making jokes. Uh, having meaningful impact outside of the lab requires collaboration beyond our walls. Following the commercial deployment of both Spot and Stretch, we know how to deliver real value for customers. Similar uh, to our Stretch rollout, we were partnering with a small group of innovative customers and beyond, uh, beginning with Hyundai to test and iterate Atlas applications over the next few years. So, you know, however you want to define a few years, but it, this is interesting stuff though. Um, this is the first look at, the, at a real product, but it certainly isn't the last. Um, the electric version of Atlas will be stronger with broader range of motion than any of our previous generations. Uh, for example, our last generation hydraulic Atlas, that's the HD Atlas, could uh, already lift and maneuver a wide variety of heavy irregular objects. I think this is interesting and important. Heavy and irregular, because think about that. Um, you know, heavy is good. Uh, you know, big, uh, you know, big items. But the irregular thing is good because, like, see, let's say, like, for example, because robots, you could program it or, or maybe build it to only pick up crates and boxes, right? That's different than say irregular objects to be like, you know, skis. Just for example, because it's an unusual shape object or, or move trees around or well, not. Or okay, I'll be able to do this. How about sculptures? <laughs> but like you know, think that's not a box, right? So that so that would take a lot of programming because you had to be delicate sometimes, etc. So 
um, you know, until we get to that stage. And, and when you watch these, like, you know, stuff that they do, these videos and stuff, you, you realize like how much testing and goes into this stuff. Like, we'll take a look at some video here. I mean, this, this whole, you know, process is, is, is really like, like the chair would be in a regular shape. Yeah. Like moving a table, there's a two by four, or, uh, yeah. Weights. Um, yeah, there's another chair again. And you can see here, they went with the claw thing for hand there. So, you know, with the Tesla team doing like, you know, humanoid hands. It's not really that necessary. They'll probably argue that it is. Looks like so. Yeah, that's another like claw, like third finger thing. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's showing. And, and and I think when you show the like the more unusual objects like this, it really shows like how how versatile this thing could be, right? Um, a lot of this stuff though isn't necessarily combining AI. I think I think my opinion or my opinion, my understanding of Boston Dynamics is they use a lot of like um, remote control kind of work. So you know we're not at the stage yet where like this thing can like you know be self sentient, talk on it, you know walk in by itself, talk talk by itself, you know think that kind of stuff. It's still a machine, very very much so, um, but a very capable machine. You know I mean obviously it it can do quite a bit as you guys can see here at the demo. So that's where this regular object thing is pretty interesting. Um, we are continuing to build on those existing capabilities and are exploring several new gripper variations. Oh, I just mentioned that. So they, they use the use gripper. Gripper variations to meet a diverse set of expected uh, manipula uh, manipulation needed in, needs in customer environments. The other thing too, which probably what they'll end up doing with this thing is build it like in a modular way. So maybe you can like swap out the hands for like different types of hands, you know? <laughs> guys, I watch movies the same way you guys watch movies, you know, it's like, it, it, I mean, it's literally just like the movies. Like, I'm going to, you know, take off one arm and I'm going to put, you know, a chainsaw on it or whatever. But uh, <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Like, like you want to design this thing so it can have interchangeable parts. And I think, um, you know, for example, maybe sometimes the robot needs to have a, a drill in one arm or a shovel or whatever, right? So, um, and, and, if, and if they're really talking about commercial, then, you know, you got to think about use and, and utility. Uh, what else does it say here? Uh, moreover, a capable robot is only one piece, uh, one of the pieces required for successful commercial solution. Wow, I mentioned it again, commercial solution. Uh, scaled automo auto autonomous, not auto autonomous mobile robot deployments are part of the broader digital transformation ecosystem requiring IT infrastructure. I right? got software stuff so we got to worry about. Employee buy-in, meaning people, are people going to agree with, you know, having these things. Connectivity, workflow, safety standards. Yeah, all these things are important. Safety is really important. Workflow, how's it going to fit into, you know, your current, you know, company or whatever. An operational process for robots and data they generate and rely on. With over 1,500 deployments, Spot is already teaching hundreds of companies how to work alongside autonomous mobile robots. <laughs> this is funny. I mean, because, like, you know, you have this technology and it's like, okay, is it going to make my life better or not? And you kind of have to, like, convince people that it does. And this is for the new, new technology. Um, when you first get it, you're like, you're so used to the old way. You don't really switch over until you're convinced that you know learning the, the new tech is worth uh, is worth it. Um, Spot is already t okay. We believe that humanoids will be will be most effective if they're deployed uh, with in-depth models of facility uh, or faculty, I should say, uh, of a faculty and lots of lots of data about how it operates. You can start creating these types of digital twins with Spot today using Spot Stretch and Boston Dynamics to facilitate this operational sea change. For organization so i myself am not quite convinced you need a humanoid robot uh, i think there's more efficient um you know ways to build these things just you know put on wheels etc but um you would make the case why you need a human robot is that it'll go places designed for humans that would be the case for it but do we need that and do we want that do we want the human robot to go everywhere <laughs> so you know we're getting to more ethical kind of questions and stuff like that and and you know the the jobs that it would replace um let's keep reading here it says uh, and we are not just delivering industry leading hardware. Some of our most exciting progress over the couple, past couple of years has been in software. In addition to our decades of expertise in simulation and model predictive control, we have equipped our robots with new AI and machine learning tools uh, like uh, reinforcement learning and computer vision ensure that they can operate and adapt efficiently to complex real world solutions. It just shows like how much work goes in this, right? Then you gotta have the hardware stuff of like, you know, get the um the cameras to work etc and, and one thing i was just thinking out loud with you guys you know how, how did these things operate in, in like an environment where you know you lose your sense of camera uh, so for example me as a human right you guys know this i have my what five senses but you know for walking around can i see can i hear i don't know if the robot needs to taste anything <laughs> uh touch i guess is, is key 
Uh, and do robots need to smell? Who knows, right? So I was just thinking about the, all of the tech that would go into this stuff. Um, it, it's fascinating. And, and, you know, could a robot self-repair? I, I don't know, self-repair, self-correct is a good way to say it. I was thinking in the sense of like, if, if the robot gets oil on its, you know, sensors, can it wipe wipe it off the same way I would like, you know, um, get the dirt out of my eye, that kind of thing. Um, just talking out loud. It, it's so interesting to read through this stuff though. I, I'm not sold on the human robot though myself. I think it's cool, but I'm not essentially sold on that form factor. Um, we are also recently uh, launched our Orbit software, which provides centralized platform to manage your entire robot fleet. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, site maps and digital transformation data. Today it's available on spot, but Stretch and Atlas will be integrated into its enterprise solution. Um, with a robust team of ML experts shaping our products, we are prepared to bring impactful AI to market immediately. I keep talking about market. I feel like, I feel like this is an IPO pitch. I really do. Uh, and we already started with Spot and it will get even better and faster with Atlas. So, okay, they're gonna try to convince me human and robot. The role of the human and robot, the latest iteration of Atlas builds on a long history of innovation in R&D, pushing the limits of whole body mobility and by manual manipulation. From pet men uh, testing, per, uh, that's the earlier robots, uh, testing protective clothing to uh, recently retired HD Atlas uh, performing uh, parkour. Um, we have spent over a decade moving the state of the art forward with human and robots. Traditionally, we have focused on legged robots, right? Remember I said the form factor here, legged robots because we wanted to build robots that could balance and more dynamically robots that could navigate unstructured, unknown or anti antagonistic terrain with ease. So the way that they word this is, uh, so like the, the argument for the wheels would be, you know, if you're just gonna be in a factory, you'd make, you know, like a, like a road or, 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 or a pathway that would go on. Um, the argument for the, um, and, 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 you know, a car can drive on different terrains, you know, et cetera. Like take a look at the Mars Rover, for example, just for example. Um, but um, talking about it here, here, they're saying like, okay, the reason why you want legs, it, it, it may be better, that's the argument they'll make, better for uh, navigate unstructured, unknown, or antagonistic terrain. So like where the terrain is harsh and, and against you, right? That's sort of what they're making the case for that. That's why you want humanoids. Um, the humanoid form factor is useful design for uh, robots working uh, in a world designed for people. Yeah, I mentioned that. Uh, but and then and to address this other point, you know, it wouldn't necessarily have to be humanoid for this. You know, to to to, to deal with this stuff, uh, you could go with a dog. Like the the four legged thing could um, you know do the, the different terrains. But um, if you're saying the world is designed for robot uh, humans, where you you know want these to operate, then theoretically build a human robot, <laughs> I say theoretically. Um, however, that form factor doesn't limit our vision on uh, of how a bipedal robot can move, what tools it needs to succeed, and how it can help people accomplish more. We designed the electric version of Atlas to be stronger, more dex uh, mix dexterous, uh, dexterous is how you say that, <laughs> and more agile. So like, you know, be more flexible, be able to move around quickly and, um, you know, more, more dynamic. Uh, Atlas may resemble a human form factor, but we are equipping the robot to move in the most efficient way possible to complete a task. And so essentially, like, even though they're saying, you know, it looks like a humanish, it can do things that a human can't. So the example, you know, the way that this moves here, it, it can just, you know, moves differently than we would. Um, it's a, like the form is human, but look at, you know, the way the joints are built, et cetera. And, you know, like, like you could do his head 360, we can't do like an owl kind of movement, right? So. Um, that's the case that they're making. <laughs> that thing's so funky. <laughs> I, I honestly, I'm impressed. Uh, you know, whether or not I would buy one for myself or my company, etc. You know, who knows? But I'm impressed by their technology. Um, rather than being constrained by human range of motion, yeah. So we're talking about range of motion. Um, Atlas will move in ways that ex exceed human capabilities, combining decades of practical experience with first principle uh, thinking. We are confident in our ability to deliver a robot capable of tackling dull dirty and dangerous task in real application. So this is sort of their argument why you need this thing for dull, dirty and dangerous tasks. And um, I'm surprised they didn't put repetitive in there. I, I think, I guess dull is the same as repetitive. I was just thinking about that. Um, but that's why I theoretically you want these things. Um, but just for example, why you wouldn't want these things, instead of having a humanoid robot say go down in the coal mine and mine coal, just build like a car that can mine coal and be, be a cart and a miner at the same time, you know, for example. Um, but I guess you would make the argument on the coal mining thing is like, well, you know, maybe maybe having two legs is easier to get around in that kind of environment. So we'll see how their testing goes. Uh, I still, I'm not necessarily sold on it, but I do think it's cool. Um, and also too, to be fair to, to, to Boston Dynamics, 
ultimately you are trying to sell stuff to people and maybe that's what people want to buy you know who knows uh commercialization takes great uh commercialization again makes this money making <laughs> takes great engineering but also takes patience imagination and collaboration bison dynamics has proven that we can deliver the full package with both industry leading robotics and a complete ecosystem and that's key right you gotta support it um you know how, how do these things are gonna work together so you got software service support make robotics useful in the real world so that's the new atlas we'll watch the video one more time what do you guys think is this going to be a success for them um are we uh, now looking at uh, possible you know ai slash robot rush and is apple going to be like oh my god i want to build a human robot too um like i said already i expressed my opinion so i want to just read through what they had to say um you know i i still think we're i don't know maybe at least a decade from really seeing these anywhere if at all but you know i mean honestly guys they're 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 pretty impressive and again it all comes in what the cost of this stuff is so anyway uh please share your thoughts on this one i think it's a fun one and i'll catch you next video